بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی بگن ان دا نیم آف اللہ ہوز مرسی از پروفاؤنڈ ہوز کائنڈنیس از فور ایور آئی ہوپ بائی ناؤ یو آر آلریڈی ان دی ہیبٹ آف پریکٹسنگ واٹ ایور وی ہیو لرنڈ از یٹ ان عربک گرامر تھرو یور ریڈنگ آف دا قرآن دیٹس دی اونلی وے یو ول انڈرسٹینڈ دی ڈائریکٹ میننگز آف دا قرآن by going into the text, by applying the principles uh, that we have understood and by looking at the translations. Obviously, uh, we should not expect that we'll uh, all of a sudden start understanding uh, the meanings of the Quran and translating it directly. Uh, we will resort to the translations, look at what the text is saying and what the translator has done in rendering it in it into our language um, and see what principles were applicable. Let's move on. Um, there is a way of expression in Arabic wherein um, a verb is used in order for uh, the meanings of it to be expressed in a forceful effective manner. There are different ways of doing it. You know, we know, for example, mafoole mutlaq is one way of uh, emphasizing that a certain, uh, a certain act happened, a certain verb incident took place. And it took place at a, at a not a normal level, but at a level of high, call it intensity. But there is another way of doing it, which is called Noon Mushaddad. Uh, why is it called Noon Mushaddad? We'll know very sh shortly. Uh, I'll just give you an example of how it happens. There is a fail Muzare Yan Suru, for example. By the way, Noon Mushaddad is an idea which gets applicable uh, in the Muzare Fail. Um, ordinarily, it's Yan Suru, Yan Surani. Yan Suruna. But when it takes the form of Noon Mushaddad, it's going to be Yan Suranna. Yan Suru, he is helping. He will most, well, he will help. That's the future. But when you are converting the same verb into noon mushaddad, you're actually stressing it, emphasizing it, taking it to a high level of emphasis, intensity. Yansuru, he will help. Yansurunna, he will most certainly help. In actual fact, in most cases, what you find is that you also have a lam of emphasis added, like the lam of emphasis you have in al insana lafi khusr in that verse so this is what happens uh, and this is obviously because uh, it's called mushaddad because this noon that is added has a tashdeed it's uh, it's repeated twice yan surani becomes yan surani Uh, not very often used. But the other one that use, is used quite often is the plural form. Yan suruna becomes Yan surunna. Now, the only difference between Yan suranna and Yan surunna is that of this uh, uh, harakat. Uh, 
vowel. In this case, it's uh, fatha, zabr. In this case, it's uh, dhamma, pesh. Uh, likewise, tansuru, tansuru, tansurani, Yan Surna. This is the original uh, Fail Mubare Gardan, and that is this one is uh, Noon Mushaddat. Now, Tansuru, Tansuru, I hope you will do it the right way if you do it on your own, would become Tansuranna. Like Yansuru became Yansuranna, Tansuru would become Tansuranna. And if you add uh, the emphasis, Lam of emphasis, it would become the Tansuranna. Uh, Tansuranni, Tansuranni. And the last one is, uh, is a little uh, uncharacteristic, it doesn't follow the same flow. And for good reasons, we have seen it that uh, plural feminine follows a slightly different pattern. It's yansur nani. Thankfully, not used in the Quran. So uh, this is noon mushaddad. Likewise, you move on to do the other. Uh, different boxes of gardan of uh, the metrics so this is noon mushaddad let's do a famous example of it in the quran oh and i'll give you a reference of where it's found in another passage uh, in a greater number and obviously the reason why we are doing it here is that we want to understand wow uh, how the different words, verbs are used in the Quran. Uh, the famous example is the example that we have in the case of Surah Takathur. Uh, the Almighty mentions in Surah Takathur, uh, Thumma, then Latus Alunna, most certainly you're going to be asked. Natus alunna. Yauma is in. On that day. Anin naim. About the blessings. So, summa is then. And this is noon mushaddad. Uh, ordinarily, it really was a verb. Alu. Yeah, I always have a problem with seeing Tus Alu. Um, this is passive, but it becomes, it has become Tus Aluna. No, it wasn't Tus Alu, it was Tus Aluna. Because this is the deciding factor. If it is Dhamma Pesh, then it's actually tus aluna, which is plural, which is converted like this. Had it been a fatha zabr, then it would have been singular. So thumma talatus aluna yauma is in anin naim. Thereafter, you're most certainly going to be asked about the uh, blessings. This is surah takasur, surah number 102. Uh, one passage of the Quran where you will find Many verbs converted into mushaddad is in Surah Ibrahim verse, verses 13 and 14. So that is one other, uh, one other expression out of the way. Probably the very last of the things that I have to now uh, introduce. Um, 
some people say that when you are learning the very early part of Arabic, probably it is uh, uh, the most uh, the most daunting, the most uh, difficult. But uh, that's not true. Uh, I'm sure that when you've come as far as you've as as you've done uh, in these lectures and you've followed them properly, uh, done better than what I have taught you, you'll most certainly find that uh, uh, what I'm going to now introduce you to is uh, not going to be difficult. Uh, before I do that, let me uh, first take away from the path, the flow, another aspect of understanding, which really is, uh, is kind of uh, uh, a basic principle if you appreciate, you will have a taste of uh, how verbs certain or, or words, even nouns, change in certain cases. You see, there are three letters, three alphabets in Arabic. Hamza, Vau, Ya. Each one of them, each one of them has... Um, a haraka, a vowel, which is similar to it in its um, sound. So, alif and zabar, vow and pesh, that is fatha, dhamma, and ya and zir, kasra, are the pairs. Uh, and these three letters are called huruf illat. They have a, they have a problem. They are they create difficulty. Uh, why does it happen? Well, it has to do with the taste of the Arabs. Uh, you know, the the sound of letters when. Uh, words are spoken, uh, when they are preceded by a certain sound uh, which it is uh, not particularly comfortable with, it causes, it causes difficulties. You know, we do have our own peculiar difficulties in, in speaking, speaking English um, because of the kind of uh, uh, sounds of letters that we are more familiar with. It's only when people live uh, with those whose mother tongue English is that they are able to pronounce things, pronounce words more, uh, more properly. Um, you know, these three um, letters, when they appear in a way that they are preceded by uh, a harakat vowel, which is uh, either consistent or different, uh, there are certain changes that take place. And there is you know, an elaborate dis discussion in book books of grammar about these huruf illat and the principles that they follow. Um, you know, it will be great if some of you are able to go through those principles and, and are able to master uh, how those principles get applicable. Well, I've given up, you know, but I'll just understand in principle what this, uh, this whole idea is, and you get a taste of it as to what really is happening. Now, what I'm trying to say is that, you see, if you take a very famous uh, verb, qala, and you see it's Mudare Yakulu. You know, going by the understanding that you've had as yet, you should ask yourself what's going on? Why is this verb, the pair of past and uh, present future, Mazi and Muzare fail? Uh, why do they look the way they are looking here? Why are they not following this pattern of Dharaba, 
या बरेबू ऑफ नासारा यान सुरू वाई नॉट यू सी माई पॉइंट आई मीन दरमा है द रा एंड यदरिबू है द रा विद एन एडिशन ऑफ या नसरा हैज न सारा यंसरू अगेन हैज न सारा विद अ ये या प्रिसीडिंग इट बट इज नॉट हैपनिंग हेयर लाइक दैट इट्स का आ ला एंड का वाओ ओ लू सो यू नो इट्स डिफरेंट वाई इज इट डिफरेंट वेल दैट्स वॉट ब्रिंग्स अस टू दिस डिस्कशन ऑफ हरूफ इलत वाइल एक्सप्लेनिंग द रीजन द ग्रमेरियन ग्रमेरियन सजेस्ट दैट द ओरिजिनल पास टेंस ऑफ काला वॉज एक्चुअली कवला एंड द फ्यूचर वॉज द मुजारे वॉज यक वोलू यक वोलू दैट्स वॉट दैट पैटर्न इज नासारा यन सुरू कावाला यक वोलू बट एक्चुअली इट्स काला यकूलू सो द वे द एक्सप्लेन इज दिस दैट बिकॉज वाओ एंड जबर फतहा दे आर नॉट कंसिस्टेंट दे काइंड ऑफ डोंट एग्री विद ईच अदर दे डोंट ग्रो वेल विद ईच अदर देर फोर इट हैड टू बी वन ऑफ द टू थिंग्स वन वुड हैव गिवन वे फॉर द अदर एंड दिस बींग प्रोसीडेड बाय जबर फतहा it actually required that wow should disappear and instead there should be alif which is consistent with the fatha of qa and it should become qala qawala is an awkward uh, expression for the arabs now uh, they don't feel comfortable the fact of the matter is that obviously that they have been speaking qala right from the beginning it's only the grammarians whose task it is to explain the principles of the language the way they are spoken by those whose mother tongue the la- whose mother tongue it is uh, just to explain the rationale behind the way it's done uh, they say that you know qala was originally qawala although originally it was never it never was but just trying to understand it from uh, the point of view of its principles and it became qala because of the fact that uh, alif is not consistent with waw so one of the two had to give way and yaqulu yaqulu became yaq yaqulu for the same reasons uh you know waw and and dhamma they go together so you know the flow had to be the flow had to be uh consistent compatible and that is how you know huruf illat whenever they appear they uh, introduce changes they demand some changes for them to be accommodated they they are they are the trouble makers they are the ones who change the pattern uh, so that probably is one important principle to learn that when you are reading uh, arabic speaking arabic and you got in a word huruf illat and you find that the pattern of the word is not what you would ordinarily expect then uh, don't be surprised don't be disappointed uh, it actually is because of uh, one of these three letters appearing and appearing in a way that uh, the uh, vowel preceding it or succeeding it is not consistent and there are therefore uh, some kind of changes that are incorporated to make sure that the arabs when they speak uh, they do not have any difficulty so we take the same qala uh it's passive qawila ah uh, can you imagine what kind of change 
has taken place in the real world, when it's spoken by the Arabs, it has become tila. That is, this kasra, zair, of vow uh, doesn't accept a vow. And kaf has its uh, dhamma pesh. So it's all becoming very difficult, problematic for the Arab tongue to, to pronounce it. So kovila becomes tila. Uh, and likewise, it's uh, mozare is yukvalu. Uh, Yukvalu. Somehow that too is an awkward uh, pronunciation. So Yukvalu would become Yukalu. Yukalu. Uh, it's an adjustment because Vau and uh, and Fatha were not getting well together. You have problem understanding, I have problem understanding as well. The only thing is that you need to understand that Alif, Vau, and Ya are the three problem letters. And the problem is that they have in the harakat, the vowels, three similarly sounding uh, vowels, uh, each vowel uh, having one, uh, call it partner, amongst uh, the alphabets, the Arabic letters. And as a consequence, uh, there they have to be adjustments uh, required to take place. Uh, they are troublemakers. They are the ones who cannot uh, stay, function, work uh, together with uh, everybody else uh, easily, uh, more particularly when there are inconsistent, incompatible harakat uh, coming before or after them. So that kind of an adjustment it takes place and obviously there are people who are, who are convinced that uh, there is a neat, uh, consistent uh, pattern that is followed, but that is when it actually gets translated into, into principles, it becomes a pretty cumbersome, difficult to understand uh, description, science of principles. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it's sufficient for a beginner to know that these huruf illat, when they would come, you would have uh, the formation of words not, not the same as you would expect. May the Almighty enable us to understand uh, the Arabic of his book properly and to, to follow, its, uh, follow its message as best as we can.